Hey everybody, Rob Dickerson here, the rep for British Columbia for Scott. Welcome to the poll clinic. Um, and uh, I hope I can just have a little bit of your time and, and help you make a difference to your selling of polls and uh, helping your, you get your customers what, uh, what they need and expect. One of the last things people talk about or, or want to buy or polls, it's a, an afterthought. And in many cases, it, it can be one of their saving graces. Um, to start off with, I just wanted to let you know, this is uh, the category that Scott started off in, in, in 1958 out of uh, Sun Valley, Idaho. It was uh, being the inventors, I'm going to say, of the first ever aluminum ski pole. Uh, before aluminum was steel and before steel was uh, uh, bamboo. So having a pole made out of aluminum made a whole bunch of sense for a whole bunch of reasons. And one of them was uh, a pole that was extremely lightweight compared to steel, of course. Um, it also was very strong <coughs> well, being light. And one of the other big things is that um, we could make them swing easier and be easier on people's joints, their body, their, their uh, shoulders and elbows and so on and so forth. So again, Scott invented the aluminum ski pole in 1958. We build all our ski poles in our own factory in Italy and have done for probably, well, about 1960, I believe. So it, it's been, you know, 80, what, 80 years, 60, 40, no, 60 years, 60 plus years at least. So anyway, um, the thing about building them in our own factory is we can control the way the poles are made. Um, we have uh, our own aluminum that we extrude. It's all aircraft grade aluminum. Um, I should say swaged. So we, we shape the aluminum from thick in terms of up here, in terms of the outside diameter to thin down here. That gives us less wind resistance and better um, swing weight when we can make them uh, narrower down at the bottom. But what is important is discerning the strength to cost ratio in the poles by, again, virtue of cost. So everybody wants to hit a price point, uh, be it the consumer or the retailer, and we try to give the biggest bang for the buck. So in doing so, we have to change certain features in a pole to obtain that. And the first place we go to is the grade of aluminum or the strength of the aluminum. The actual design of the, the pole itself and going from thick to thin is, is the same in every pole that we do, no matter the price point. But in terms of the aluminum itself, it'll change. And it'll change from a tensile bending and breaking standpoint. So we measure by number in pounds per square inch in terms of, again, our, our breaking and bending strength, but we also simplify it by using simple numbers. So our poles are S2, S2.5, S3, S4, and then we do carbon poles. But in our aluminum, they're done in S2, 2.5, 3, and 4. 4 being our highest grade of aluminum. No matter what pole it is, a 2 or a 4, it's 
all aircraft grade aluminum. And then we treat the poles for tensile bending and breaking strength thereafter. So the more treatment, the more cost, the stronger the pole, the more cost. The swing weight and weight can change a little bit for sure. Um, not so much in the aluminum itself, but in the components that are added to the aluminum shaft. So bending and breaking strength are go hand in hand. And most people that are beginners will want to have inexpensive poles. I understand that. But they're the ones that are hardest on poles. So a lot of times it would be nice for people that are getting into it, especially if they're good athletes, they're gonna learn quick, again, catch on quickly. They can keep that same pole for a long period of time, it means that they wanna get a better pole really, because if they land on it, they're less likely to bend and break it. They can keep them forever. But again, a lot of them won't go there. Our first price point poles are around $55. And then in a series two, when we go to a 2.5 pole, the 0.5 just means we change the grips on them. And when we go to a series three pole, we go to the next real stage of aluminum. By the way, uh, series two, 2.5 is around 45,000 pounds tensile breaking strength, we call it, to 65,000 pounds. And then our series four, and these numbers will be on the poles, are 75,000 pounds. So anything on our top echelon of aluminum poles will be series four poles. If you can, shoot for series four. Um, I know it's difficult, but they will last far longer than a series two or 2.5. But if people are not really hard on poles, then, you know, they're not falling all the time. They're more timid. Um, they can get away with a less expensive pole maybe, but some of it is gonna be in the grip material, grip design, whether it's, um, you know, a smooth handle or, or a notched one, which all our top athletes want and most top skiers want. But um, you get that and then the better ice tip on them, which will be explained later on. But basically, that's a story about aluminum. And our poles, again, are swaged, and I'll go into that a little bit more, but that simply, and it's called de dual swaging, it means where we go thick diameter up by the grip to thin diameter down at the tip of the pole. But dual swaging means that the wall thickness of the pole is thin where the pole is thick and thick where it's thin, okay? So the reason why we make it thinner here is cut down on weight and it gets strength by virtue of diameter. But when we thin them out down here for reducing swing weight and wind resistance, we make them thicker. And also the thickness down here pertains to strength because when you go in skinnier diameter, all else being equal, they will snap more easily. Your edges can cut into them and start compromising the aluminum. This way you get lightweight and strength and great swing weight by making it, actually we're probably one of the narrowest, strongest poles down in this end um, of any pole on the market. That could be argued, but I'm gonna say we are. So we'll speak to this.